welcome to the SVG TV News for Tuesday, March 8th. I am Khalil Cato with the details. Today, SVG joins the global community in celebrating International Women's Day under the theme Gender Equality Today for a Sustainable Tomorrow. In her message to mark the occasion, President of the National Council of Women, Beverly Richards, called for women and girls to be recognized for their contribution in leading the charge on climate change adaptation, mitigation and response to build a more sustainable future for all. More vulnerable to impacts than men. And when it comes to the issues of climate change and sustainability, climate change is not neutral because it does not affect everyone in the same way, and it is not gender neutral. Due to cultural norms, women are expected to be primary givers. They are responsible for cultivating land, produce food, collect fuel and water for their families. In the case of natural disasters, they are expected to protect themselves, their children and the elderly, yet they are faced with exhaustion and violence against women. Unfortunately, women are silenced and excluded. Their voices are not always welcome in the conversation. However, they are indispensable, effective and powerful leaders and provide inspiration and untapped opportunities on how to build a brighter and better future in the changing climate. Richard said International Women's Day should be used to examine the opportunity as well as the constraints to empower women and girls to have a voice and be equal players in decision-making, sustainable development and greater gender equality. The upcoming 66th Commission on the Status of Women under the theme Achieving Gender Equality and the Empowerment of All Women and Girls in the context related to climate change and sustainability, environmental and disaster risk reduction policies and programs. Empowering women to know their rights is also imperative to adaptation and mitigation. In obtaining gender equality, male and female workers should be eligible for equal pay and no discrimination in matter of transfer, training and promotion. There are many women who would have inspired and motivated us in one way or another along life's pathway. Show your appreciation today, Tuesday 8th, March 2022, International Women's Day. Happy Women's Day. While there has been progress made in uplifting the lives of women and girls in SVG, there are still a number of problem areas that need urgent attention. This was the view expressed by Minister of Education Curtis King during an address to female students and staff of the West St. George Secondary School to mark the celebration of International Women's and Girls' Day. Minister King said the local perception of women as merely being sexual objects is a worrying one. He called for an end to the incidence of child abuse in SVG. I speak here of the number of cases that we still have of our girls and adult females being sexually harassed, being raped, being subject to domestic abuse. So that even while we celebrate today, we must not lose focus that there is still a lot to be done. The principal of the West St. George Secondary School, Diane Williams, praised the female students for rising above social and education challenges. Williams said the female population of the school has been affected by low literacy rates. She added, with interventions by the school and help from the community, the students have been able to overcome difficult circumstances. We have special reading programs to deal with reading issues. We have been trying to give them alternatives other than, other than academics to choose from. We have a music band, a thriving agriculture program, and an art program. We partner with the community members who provide lunches and other school materials to the students. Despite the difficulties they face, our girls are quite resilient. They participate in many activities and have won many competitions. And president of the Leave Out Violence in SVG, Love in SVG, and women's, women's rights activist Nyla John called on Vincentians to have more compassion towards victims of domestic and sexual abuse. Speaking to SVG TV News, 
John said the women of the SVG should be commended for their strides, for the strides they have made socially and politically in recent years. However, she noted, the public treatment of women who speak out against their abusers is a cause for concern. She said it is time to, for the public to stop blaming and shaming victims who come forward. It is so important that women are treated with utmost respect, and, and that is not the perception in St. Vincent. For instance, you know, um, a woman that, you know, goes to um, the police station or she gets on social media because that's now the platform and talks about being raped or sexually assaulted, instead of this woman being supported the woman is is victimized we need to be proactive in our approach we need to not victimize our victims we need to ask those that make legislation which is the government in power to 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 revise legislation we can't have something on the books from 1965 or 68 we're in 2022 this is a completely different world that we live in. Three female entrepreneurs who won the business plan competition of the Women Empowerment Project, which began last August, were presented with their cash prize of 26,000 DC dollars each at a ceremony today at the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan. The winners are Jessica Jaja of Beckway Threadworks, Sophia Seals of Seals Agro Products, and Kenna Kittels of Kinexio. They were among six other females who pitched their business plans their business plan to several judges last Friday, March 4th. Speaking at today's prize-giving ceremony, training and education coordinator for the Center for Enterprise Development, Keisha Phillips, gave an overview of the Women Empowerment Project Business Plan competition. Ladies were among 27 whose enterprises were selected to compete in the first round of the Women's Empowerment Project, which ran from August to December 2021. They have gone through a rigorous program of trainings to help them to develop their capacities as operators or entrepreneurs in business. The hard areas for them were financial management, which was very intense, and of course they ended off with a workshop in writing a business plan. Hence the outcome today. They have they were among the others who submitted on the 31st of December 2021 their business plans. And last week, as I said, they pitched before a panel. The Women Empowerment Project, funded by the government of the Republic of China and Taiwan, focused on assisting the economic, and, the economic recovery and empowerment of women in Latin America and the Caribbean in the post-COVID-19 era. Minister of State with Responsibility for Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Kiesel Peters, said that the project is timely as the country celebrates International Women's Day. Speaking on the benefits of the project, Peter said that every woman has a role to play in forging a more gender-balanced world. The Women's Empowerment Project will include, among other things, technical assistance, such as vocational skills training for women, counseling for women's entrepreneurship and development, as well as counseling for micro, small and medium enterprises owned by Vincent and women. Another key component of the Women's Empowerment Project is the international initiative whereby the Taiwan Technical Mission in collaboration with the Center for Enterprise Development is currently inviting international or local women-related organizations in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to submit proposals which will benefit the women of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is the hope that the proposal will focus on areas such as economy, finance, commerce, culture, education, technology, health, nutrition, environmental protection, and climate change, just to name a few. Taiwan's ambassador to SVG, His Excellency Peter Shali Lan, gave a brief history of the project and explained its importance. Ambassador Lan also congratulated the winners of the business plan competition. Now, this today's uh, award is the Entrepreneur Elite Award, which is only one part of this project. We do have others like vocational training, like business counseling, international initiatives. And don't forget about this award, 
This is only the award for the year 2021. We do have another two rounds of this competition coming up for the first and the second half of this year. So I would like to take this opportunity to encourage all Vincentian women to participate in all these competitions or training courses. Secondly, this is the first time we grant out this award for the top three winners. So we will continue to work together in collaboration with CED, with the Ministry of, let me say, Gender Equality, <laughs> to uh, promote this program. So also addressing today's prize giving ceremony was Minister of National Mobilization and Gender Affairs, Orlando Brewster, who said the government of SVG continues to empower and invest in women and girls across the country. Minister Brewster said he stands in full support of women across the globe. From the government level, we are doing our very best to make sure that we not only take care of our women, but we empower our women. Hence, we are here today at a special ceremony, the Women's Empowerment Project here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Now, this project is far and wide-reaching. It has gone through a few stages and we are here I think at the second stage where we are selecting some of the winners who as you heard went through some rigorous procedures <laughs> and programs and training to be here today. Wishing all women and girls in SVG happy and International Women and Girls Day, Minister Brewster advised them not to miss out on the opportunities that the government is providing for them. All Vincentian women who's involved in business, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, small skills, vocational skills, grasp the opportunity. Because sometimes an opportunity only comes knocking once. So again, thank you for having me here today as the minister with the responsibility of gender affairs. And again, I want to wish each and every woman across the globe a happy International Women's Day 2022. <laughs> SVG's active COVID-19 cases are now down to two. The latest update provided by the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment yesterday indicates no new positive PCR or rapid antigen cases being reported for being recorded for the reporting period. There is also zero, there are also zero hospitalizations due to COVID-19. 8,321 cases of COVID-19 and 6,632 recoveries have been recorded in SVG to date with 106 deaths. 68,015 vaccines have been administered here thus far. 35,412 persons received their first dose while 29,398 received their second with 3,207 boosters administered. President of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Teachers Union, Oswald Robinson, continues to blast the government's vaccination policy, which resulted in a number of teachers and other public sector workers losing their jobs and accrued benefits for failing to take a COVID-19 vaccine. A memo written on February 23rd to the Chief Environmental Health Officer from the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment was made public on Monday. It detailed the decision taken to have all permanent sanitation workers who are presently off the job, having not taken the COVID-19 vaccine, to be allowed to return to work without the vaccine. Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, Sinclair Prince, told SVG TV News yesterday that it was an administrative error to have the sanitation workers included on the list of those who were required to get vaccinated as part of the government's policy and that those who were affected will be compensated. Commenting on this development, the SVGTU president said the vaccination policy was a wicked act, noting that a number of the nation's children have been served a great injustice by having highly trained and experienced teachers taken away from them, especially at a time when they should have been helping them to prepare for the upcoming CXC exams. So we are calling on the government, as we have done consistently, in terms of our effective representation of our workers and, and in particular now teachers who are so direly need in the classroom because our children are suffering 
many schools do not have adequate quality teachers. And we know CXC will begin in a month or two, in the month of May. Many students in the classroom cannot and have not yet started to do the SBA has, has done is to hold our students at ransom and firing quality teachers. A lot of Form 5 teachers have been out of job and those are the persons who have the responsibility to, to prepare the students. They have the experience, the knowledge, the expertise in preparing our students adequately for the external exams. And it is very, very sad that a government and the Ministry of Education has been involved in this wicked act. If you're going to call back the sanitation workers, you have to get back all workers who have been affected by this mandatory vaccination. Robinson said the country's constitution speaks against trampling on people's rights. He pointed out that while a few teachers who missed the vaccination deadline were allowed back in the classroom after taking the jab, others were sent home without pay, and this treatment cannot be acceptable in a democratic society. The constitution of our land speaks about discrimination, and here is a government advocating for discrimination. Something is wrong with somebody somewhere. When we speak about these things, some people get upset, but you expect better of the people in authority. Robinson said the government has essentially violated the rights of many Vincentians by implementing the vaccine mandate. Right now the COVID is done, but we still as a nation holding on. There are teachers who receive letters of dismissal, the same stupid letter about deemed to have resigned. They're still propagating that. Up to last week and two weeks ago, there are teachers who have been getting letters. The government said that the, the Tusians, who are also our members, those teachers, they have received their letters of exemption. But that, that's not so. If you give somebody a letter of exemption on religious grounds, that is permanent unless you change your religion. But when you give somebody a letter of exemption on health issues, it's, it's temporary. It's just like a sick leave. And a number of teachers who have reported to me, when the doctor advised, they're still within their mind and in their body and in their soul. Their conviction is that they're still not yet ready to take a vaccine. So what the government has done is to violate people's right by forcing them to take a vaccine. In other words, you have to give up your religion. And no state in its right mind should go down that road. The constitution is there to protect the citizens. The state must never use the constitution against its citizens. The investors of the delayed Black Sands Resort in Peters Hope are expected in the country on March 19th to provide the government with a detailed plan or a new timeline in moving forward with the project. This was noted on WeFM's Issues at Hand program on Sunday by Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. I understand COVID and all that, but still, more, could have, more should have been done. And what they had sent to me earlier, I told them that um, they, I saw some progress in the document they sent me, but I, I wasn't satisfied with it. So they're coming in. Um, and I'm happy about that. Canadian, Canadian investors Pace Developments, which broke ground on the project in 2017, are yet to complete any part of the resorts, five years after they promised a 24 to 30 month construction period. Speaking on other hotel developments and projects to be undertaken, PM Gonzalez noted that over a five year period, about one billion EC dollars worth of investments are expected in the country. I'm not talking about an idea to be in, to, to get an investment. I'm talking about monies which are at hand. The port is fully financed. That is going to be just over 200 million US dollars. Um, it, it may come to close to 600 million US dollars. Sandals is doubling the original number. There will be about 205 or thereabouts. So between those two, that's 400 and something million dollars, you know. Between those two, though, that's, that's in excess of a billion EC dollars, you know. Then you have um, the Marriott, which 
was was intended to be a $55 million hotel, but probably closer now to $80 million. You know, the you know, costs have gone up. So this month is being observed as National Heroes and Heritage Month after, a, after two years of scaled-down activities due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Vincentians can expect a more visible celebration in the coming days and weeks. The Ministry of Culture has planned a number of activities, including new features such as a drumming circle at Heritage Square and a Heritage Walk. Larissa Kidd tells us more in this report. St. Vincent and the Grenadines Culture and History will come under the spotlight as the Ministry of Culture observes Heritage Month. Cultural Officer Maxine Brown related that COVID-19 has impacted her department, but this year they are not taking a back seat as they are seeking to highlight the theme, appreciating our identity, preserving our heritage with pride. COVID-19 has presented a great, great challenge and the cultural program suffered, but as I always say, we are the creatives. If we can't get it done, we will get it done. And so for the past two years, we have struggled a bit with the program because, of course, you have to follow protocols and sometimes it's 10 persons allowed, 5 persons allowed, based on the setting you're in. But this year, numbers are going down. We are not all the words, but I have implored my officers, my fellow officers, to let's work together to achieve the activities on our cultural calendar. Throughout the month of March, drummers will be participating in a drum circle at Heritage Square. And basically, they're going to just create an awakening. You're going to encourage the last crowd. You, you, you play as people pass and go through. Just build a rhythm. Uh, as I say, create a vibe. So the drum circle could be from five drummers to about ten. The cultural officer added that this year, for the first time, there will be a heritage walk. So join us on Saturday, March 12th from 6 a.m. Yeah, but you know, let's take an early morning walk and we head up to our heritage site for Charlotte and maybe get a tour of the, of the facility and hear something about our heritage and what, what, what it means to us, the history behind the fort. Other activities include the traditional Heroes Day activity at the Obelisk on March 14. In addition, there will be Gospel Fest, the Garifuna Conference, and the Dance Showcase. Also this year, historians will highlight local history by involving educational institutions. Document our, post, our local history and also provide educational material for the various institutions, namely the secondary and post-secondary education institution. An appeal was made for interested organizations to get involved in Heritage Month activities and for Vincentians to support and promote SVG's Garifuna culture. To the Obelis, you're free to stay in your own bubble, get into your vehicle and join into grants. You know, we always have about 10 in grants and support the people. We can taste all the indigenous food and all types of food because they'll be have a wide variety of food and of course, they may complement it with the cultural element in some steel pan, some drumming. So, we all support Greg and I implore for the intentions to take a drive to. The 9th International Garifuna Conference will be again held virtually this year from March 11th to 13th. The theme for this year's conference hosted by the Garifuna Heritage Foundation and, and the UWI Open Campus, St. Vincent, is building resilience, creating cultural capital for sustainability of the Garifuna heritage. The opening ceremony for the conference will take place on Friday, March 11th via Zoom, commencing at 7 p.m. The keynote address will be delivered by Garifuna entrepreneur from Belize, Darius Avila, whose leadership and vision created the Battle of the Drums movement in Belize, which has been outstanding. The opening ceremony will be followed by presentations of the 9th International Garifuna Conference. From March 12th to 13th, the conference will commence at 5 p.m., and will feature scholars and practitioners delivering videos that should be de delivering presentations on various aspects of the Garifuna culture. There will also be presentations from local organizations, researchers, etc.